Hi, my name is Dania Nairou from Park Systems, and today we're interviewing Professor Wang from the University of Wisconsin Medicine, Department of Material Science Engineering. Hello, Professor Wang. Hello. Thank you for being here, and we're very happy to interview you today. So, uh, my first question would be what is the field of your research? If you could tell us a little bit about it. Uh, uh, my research is about uh, piezoelectric uh, nanomaterials mm -hmm. uh, for the application of uh, energy harvesting. Mm -hmm. uh, so most of our research is to uh, develop uh, nano-sized piezoelectric oxide materials mm -hmm. and uh, study the uh, shape, size, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, piezoelectric response from the material. And is there usually an average size that you kind of look at or sizes uh, you can go from what range to what range? Uh, typically it's in the nanometer range, okay. so uh, tens of nanometers to micron. Okay, okay, that's nice. Um, and so can you tell us about the study that you're doing using the specific AFM? Uh, yes, uh, actually this is a important aspect of my research. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we, uh, for the application of piezoelectric and nanomaterials, yeah. so we need to understand how much potential that a specific nanomaterial can produce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, because of the small size and the uh, the accurate potential that we have to obtain, mm -hmm. so there's not too much approach that available that allow us to do this. So FM is a is a good tool. I think maybe it's uh, not the only one, it's a very important one for us to... For this type of research. Yeah, for this type of research. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, basically we just uh, using FM mm -hmm. to create a uh, strain towards our uh, nanowires, piezoelectric nanowires. Mm -hmm. and then we use a uh, um, uh, carbon probe microscopy right. based on FM to mm -hmm. measure how much potential mm -hmm. that can be produced. By the tip when you apply the force. When, when, yeah, when we apply the force. Force on the tip, yeah. Right, and then we co uh, coordinate this potential mm -hmm. to the material property and mm -hmm. to the size and to the crystal structure. Oh, that's very, very interesting work indeed. And then, so how important is having the 3D PM is for your research? <laughs> Three-dimensional. Okay. Because yeah. the AFM can offer you that for sure. Right, right. Yes. Um, how do you I, manipulate that aspect of the 3D, I would uh, say? Well, uh, first, nanowire is a 3D yeah. structure, yeah. right? So, uh, if we want to know the potential distribution on uh, the, yeah, on the wires yeah. and um, as a relationship uh, with the relationship to the uh, specific site mm -hmm. along the wires, mm -hmm. then we definitely we need to know the spatial distribution of the potential. Right, right. So all that's over the yeah, all over the nanowires, yeah. and the potential will have the relationship with the strain and different position of a different strain. Yeah. So they will probably will show different polarization, different potential, at a different location. Okay. So that's why we want to do the three-dimensional mapping. Uh, I see. And so, do you think the difference in potential across the nanowire is due to preparation conditions, or what? What do you think is? Uh, no, it's basically based on different strain. Okay. So when, when we bend uh, suspended wires, yeah. so different locations have different strain. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, is a strain gradient. Okay. So which means uh, once we bend a beam, yeah. uh, so the, new, the central plane is a mm -hmm. neutral plane mm -hmm. where I have no strain. Mm -hmm. But on the one side is a compressive strain, mm -hmm. and on the outside is an extens extension strain. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. uh, for the for the strain across the nanowires cross section, mm -hmm. there's a gradient from negative strain to mm -hmm. positive strain. Mm -hmm. So this is a very important uh, property for the piezoelectric material. Materials, so yeah. there's a um, terminology called flexoelectric effect. Flexoelectric so, effect. Uh, which means when you flex uh, it straight. Yeah, when they flex it, there's mm -hmm. a strain gradient. It's mm -hmm. not just a strain. Mm -hmm. It's a strain gradient mm -hmm. that will give us uh, probably enhanced mm -hmm. uh, piezoelectric response. Right. So that's something I, I'm studying right now, uh -huh. and to study the strain um, relationship with the polarization, yeah. it's very important to get all different locations right, and right. to correlate with the different strain and strain gradient. Wow, that's really, really interesting <laughs> work. It's really nice. And have you used any other types of AFMs other than Park AFM? Uh, actually, no. <laughs> no? Oh, okay. So 
Park AFM is your AFM. And then what are the important features that Park offers you specifically to your, re your research? Uh, this, uh, the, the carbon probe microscopy yes, and, uh, yeah, and the, the electrostatic force microscopy. Mm -hmm. So those, those kind of features are very important for my research. Mm -hmm. So of course the topography is important yeah. and we also need to get that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's electro, uh, the electro, ele electrical signal is very important it's for us. Important. Yeah, okay. for no the problem. nanowires. I see that. And then how do you find the scan area on the strain zinc oxide uh, nanowires? Uh, our nanowires basically is less than mm, micrometer okay. uh, in diameter. So, uh, the scan area is typically smaller than 10 micrometer. 10 micrometers, yeah. okay. And so is it usually easy for you to find the scan area that you're looking at for that specific area? Because you're going to have to go Right, right, all the yes. So first, uh, first we use the optical, um, optical microscope to locate where the small wires. Yeah. And I zoom in to find And find do you find that easy when you find your spot yeah. you find? Yeah, frankly, I didn't mm. do the research. Oh, okay. my, my student did it, <laughs> yeah. so he didn't complain. Uh -huh. so he, oh, okay, uh, no complain he, means yeah. it's easy. <laughs> yeah, so uh, his students uh, were pretty uh, efficient. Okay. So you can get a scan every day, uh, generate a lot of data. So oh, so efficient generates data. Yeah, so I, I, I assume, assume it's, uh, it's good. Okay, that's <laughs> good. That's good to hear. I'm very glad. And what are the key features of Park AFM that you like the most? Oh uh, well, uh, I think all the the features they're mm -hmm. they're good. They, mm -hmm. they don't bring us problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm a new professor, so yeah. our budget is kind of limited. Mm -hmm. and actually, right now, I think a lot of groups have the limited budget. Yeah. What I yeah. find is very uh, intriguing is a uh, is a cost and the mode. Uh, ratio. You know, That's this is good. good. Uh, we spend less money and get a lot of things that we yes, need. Yes, definitely. I mean, with the AFM, you can practically get all as many options as you want, even later in the future, and then you can get, do a lot of work without having to buy many instruments. Yeah. That's what I also like the most about the AFM. So I really like it. And um, are there any suggestions uh, that you would give us to support your research in the future? Any AFM suggestions or something uh, that you would probably use in the future that would help out more? Uh, yes, actually, um, I have a lot of things I want to do, mm -hmm. um, particularly about the AFM. And uh, uh, since you know, uh, we are working on the piezoelectric material. Yes. And uh, one very in interesting application for this material is, mm -hmm. uh, is to study the piezoelectric uh, field mm -hmm. uh, coupling effect with uh, semiconductor performers. Oh. So right now we are doing some research on the piezoelectric uh, field with uh, um, solar energy harvesting uh -huh. and uh, um, uh, photoelectrochemical process for mm -hmm. uh, uh, water splitting generated hydrogen field. Mm -hmm. So this kind of research. Um, I think uh, that's something I really myself I really want to pursue. You, I think I think yeah. it also it's a very very intriguing field for for using FM because yeah. FM is a very powerful tool for the fundamental study. Right. So and FM also allows us to um, to locate the very uh, very fine feature on the surface yeah. and. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, give us response of the electrical response or mm -hmm. optical response. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, if we can do this, uh, integrate this with a solar cell mm -hmm. uh, characterization mm -hmm. or uh, electrochemical cell characterization mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. study the surface or material mm -hmm. uh, spatial distribution of, of, of this response, yeah. that would be very helpful. Very, very helpful. For uh, yeah, yeah. many future applications. Yeah. So that's that's myself, I really want to develop this kind of capability in my, in my life. Oh, that would be very interesting work to see later in the future. That's yeah. very nice. Of course, I hope I can get support from your company as well. Oh, of course. <laughs> We're always here to support our customers. Yeah. Um, so these are my questions. That's all I have for now. Okay. If you have anything else you would like to share, that would be nice. Otherwise, we'll be done for today. Today. Okay, sounds and good. thank you so much again for being here well, and we're very happy to interview you and learn more about your research and thank you. Great, thank you. My mm -hmm. pleasure.